The Volunteer, written by Christopher Michaels. Fade in. Exterior, cruise line, day. A ten-year-old boy, young Wade, his eyes filled with fear, watching something intently. We hear the sounds of people chatting around him, excited, nervous about getting on the boat. Young Wade, POV. Twenty yards away, a gray-haired man is being taken away by police. He looks at Wade and winks. I wouldn't get on that ship if I were you. A blonde in a red dress, her face obscured from young Wade's view, rushes to the gray-haired man and grabs one of the police. He didn't do anything wrong. We found him with explosive in his pockets. The wolves must have put it there. The policeman looks the blonde up and down. You want to go in too? Angle on young Wade, pulled away by his parents, their faces out of view. Don't worry about that. They're none of our concern. Young Wade resists momentarily and starts pacing because of the drama. The mother grabs him and gets down on her knees. There won't be any problem to us. You're going to be fine. The parents board the ship. Wade steps back in the crowd, waiting to board. The parents continue to board, not noticing up until they get on the deck. They look down and see Wade and wave at him. Come on, son. It's nice. Just as the dad finishes his sentence, an explosion rips through the front of the ship, blowing everybody within three yards away. Wade is on the ground, bloodied and bruised. He slowly gets up and sees the wreckage on the ship. He looks for his parents in the crowd. A man in a hazmat suit comes over. We got a live one here. Interior, underground street slash future, eternal night. Don't forget curfew starts promptly at 9.30 p.m. Wade, late 30s, balding, stands in the middle of a very empty street. He looks up at what is a dark ceiling. He sighs to himself. He looks around nervously, shaken and disoriented. Then, as he looks around everywhere, we get our first look at his environment. A dark underground world of cameras, buildings sometime in the future, almost a virtual reality of red infrared and blue lines. Shadows seem to exist at every turn, much more like a video game than anything else. Cameras scan the streets. One camera scans Wade, gets blinded temporarily. Then three guards approach Wade with their hands on their weapons. Wade slowly lifts his hands up high in the air. He looks over at one of the armed guards and swallows nervously. Wow, you guys look convincing. Jason, one of the armed guards, face is almost lost in his helmet. What there is of it. Vigorous. He's just a nervous Hispanic kid. We have to move very quickly. The real guards will be here shortly. Jason immediately steps aside and puts his head down as Frosty, a menacing ex-guard with a jagged scar running down his cheek, looms close to Wade and looks at him closely in the face. You get caught? It won't be as nice to you. Frosty removes his mask and runs his fingers down his face, outlining his scar, which goes down his neck, too. I gain us our freedom. Up there, find out the truth. Be careful who you trust up there. You save me. I'll save you. Interior, server room, skylights. Wade looks up, struggling to cut various wires and avoiding sweating onto the floor in a room where computers are everywhere, like an overlord with too much power. The ceiling starts to flash with what seems like lightning. Wade scrambles out of the room and is trying to close the door. Intruder alert. Electrical floors activated. As Wade closes the door, he sees a ladder and pulls it down. He climbs up towards a top opening. No life signs on the floor found. Moving to spikes on the wall. The wall has spikes that shoot out from it. Interior, upper tier, minutes later. Wade, now in a panic sweat, sees a helmet with a plastic visor on the wall. He puts it on and looks up. Above him is a very tiny chamber with an airlock. Come on! Wade struggles with it, but gets the door open. No life signs on the wall found. Moving to fireball. A fireball shoots up quickly as Wade jumps through the opening and closes the door. He's alone. Wade's breath comes slower as he searches the wall for an oxygen tank. He hooks up one to his helmet. He sucks oxygen from the air tanks on his back. On the opposite wall, Wade sees an octagon-shaped window. Wade breaks it with his elbow and jumps out. Exterior building seconds later. Wade is standing on top of a huge skyscraper. He looks down at a crudely drawn map he holds in his hand. The map shows a brief outline of the city of Philadelphia. Exterior building, minutes later, night. Wade looks up at the sky, mesmerized at the stars. He looks down at the ground. Wade jumps down and he reaches his hand out and grabs a ledge. He climbs up on the ledge and is a little closer to the ground. There is a rusted ladder. Reaching the rusted ladder, Wade starts to climb awkwardly. Exterior, street, future, moments later, night. Wade hits the snow with a heavy oomph. He picks up the snow. He can't believe what he sees. Wade sees a giant spider in the distance. Wade's POV through his plastic visored helmet. A city in moonlight. A surreal image of abandoned buildings. Shadows everywhere. The only sounds are the footsteps and Wade's breathing. Exterior, another city street, minutes later, night. 
Wade walks by an abandoned, vine-covered automobiles. Inside, he sees human remains. Inside, he sees a praying mantis feasting on human remains. Moving to the nearest car, Wade searches for something, finds a key. He quickly opens the door and grabs the keys quickly. The praying mantis jumps over and angrily hisses. Wade backs away very slowly. He takes the map and waves it around. The praying mantis follows his map like a vampire of blood. Wade throws it and runs. Wade turns around and is startled by a blue bear. It is a terrifying, amazing sight to behold. The animal blinks, then stands on its rear legs and roars, and a frozen ice ball comes out. Wade jumps out of the way. Angle on Wade in absolute shock. Then the bear sinks down on all fours, its ears shoot up, and it dashes down the street. Interior, bakery shop, night. Wade quickly swings to see rats bigger than his head chopping down on crumbs on the black glass. Growls. Wade steps very slowly. The rats sniff in his direction and lose interest. Then three different rats. They surround Wade. Then they pounce on top of each other. They begin to wrestle. Wade finds a breaker box and turns it on. Exterior, street, daybreak has begun. A green owl perched on an overhead traffic light raises its wings, shoots poison down at Wade and lifts off, rising higher and higher into the brightening sky. Below on the street, Wade trudges along, passing deserted buildings, windows broken, rusted signs dangling. Interior, department store, daybreak. As Wade enters the store, like a fairy tale comes to life, the lights come up and an announcement comes over the PA. Welcome to Effingham Superstore. We thank you for your patronage. Then footsteps behind Wade. He turns around quickly to see Diana, Indian goddess bow and arrow in hand. Exterior, department store, dawn. Wade very slowly comes out of the store. The first rays of the sun hit the building. Wade stops and looks at Diana. A spaceman, you have two seconds. I'm here to help start a revolution. Wade and Diana look up. Wade and Diana POV. High up on a building across the street, a stone lion patrols a ledge, pauses, looks out majestically over his world. Diana takes her arrow and shoots the stone lion. She hits it squarely in the chest. The lion falls three feet away from Wade. What revolution?